today's video, we're going to be sharing with you how we installed our Nautilus instant gas hot water heater so that we can take hot showers in our van. Hey, we're Sally and Ed. And over the past few months, we have been self-converting this empty cargo van into a tiny home on wheels so that we can travel the big lap of Australia. Neither of us had any building experience prior to starting this conversion. So it has been quite the adventurous few months. And with 2020 quickly coming to an end, we need to get a rig along with this build as we're leaving to travel Australia on the 1st of January. That's in 30 days, friends. All right, so we now have 25 days to finish the van build. But before we jump into today's video, I want to quickly show you what we've been up to in the last 24 hours because Ed has done so much to the van build. So this area here is going to be a couch and bed area. It's going to be a couch slash lounge room area during the day and then at night it's going to be a bed. Also we have put in our drawers and can we just say how finished the van is starting to look now. And just to throw another spanner into the works, we are going camping in three days. And we booked this place months ago and when we booked we were super optimistic and we booked a van spot. So now we're frantically trying to get the van ready so that we can sleep in it in three days. Guys, comment down below if you think we can get it done. All right, back to the hot water heater. This is our hot water heater right here. It's a Suburban Nautilus instant hot water gas heater. And the reason we chose to go with a gas hot water heater over say an electric is because of the ability to have an unlimited amount of hot water. Well, limited by how much you have in your tanks, but unlimited by how much within your tanks can be hot. Another benefit of this means that if we're staying in a caravan park or a campsite or even at a friend's house where they have a hose, we can basically plug the hose in and get an unlimited amount of hot water in our Starting shower. off, I just want to quickly talk about the placement of where we're putting our hot water unit. So this is where we've decided to put it, just here against the wall. I would have preferred to have it on this side of the van because we're sort of going for a bit more of like a stealthy kind of look. I didn't want to have a big vent sort of sticking out the side of the van. The problem for us having it on this side is we've got gas and the gas bottles we're going to have take up most of the space here on this side of the van. So we do, just out of necessity, need to put our hot water unit on this side of the van. And as you can see, it is quite a large unit. It is really powerful, very efficient, but big. It will be on the driver's side, but in the rear panel. We were done with cutting holes in our van, but no. It just no, never no, seems no. to end. So today we do need to cut another hole in the van. So this is the vent. This is gonna be sitting on the outside of the van, this flange, and then this exhaust piece uh, is coming on the inside of the van and will extend to our hot water unit. The hot water heater is gas powered, so it does need an exhaust. This piece you buy separately from the hot water system itself. So we've got the longest exhaust that we possibly can in order to cover the distance between the inside of the van and the shell. So because the Sprinter has these ridges, you have to get the longest size exhaust, otherwise, this distance here is too narrow. If you've got a smaller vent, then this gap would be too small. We do need to cut this piece. I will measure it out. I'm pretty sure it's about 90 mils. I don't think I have a 90 mil hole saw, so we might end up using a jigsaw. But <laughs> it'll be an experiment. Comment down below if you think that's a good idea. <laughs> we'll see how we go. But this flange looks like it is reasonably big, so hopefully it'll be a little bit forgiving, like when I cut a trapezium in the roof <laughs> rather than a square for our Max fan install. So if you haven't seen me cut a hole in the roof incorrectly, go watch that video. <laughs> Marked the top of the vent and then measured down. So that's 650 down from the top of the vent that I need to drill my hole, which is about this much. So I've measured it down from the top, I'm now gonna get a drill, drill through from this side, which will tell me where it is, and that'll give me a reference point on the outside of the van for me to start drilling and cutting and going to the next steps. I was told to not do it this way, but 
I'm gonna do it this way anyway, because <laughs> the reason I was told not to do it this way is because it can be quite confusing going from inside the van to outside the van, because inside the van has all of these things and outside of the van is, is blank. I wanna go about installing it this way, so drilling through here and then using this as a reference on the outside of the van because I'm able to kind of center it between the two and I would be worried that because I'm not a super skilled or trained craftsman <laughs> <laughs> that I would just measure it wrong and mess it up. So at least if I do it this way, I know the drill point's in the right, right position. So it might be a little bit of going this side of the van, outside of the van, inside of the van, outside of the van, just to check it out and make sure it's correct. But you know, this, like I said, this flange looks pretty forgiving. There's quite a bit of space here if I mess it up the whole way around. Not that I plan to, but you know, just in case. All right. All right. Good luck! <laughs> Thanks. And there's a hole in the van! Woo! Holes in the van. So, I love how like, as this build goes, like, progresses, I just become far more confident in just putting holes in the van. Like the first, when I first put the fan in the roof, I was like, oh my god, I'm putting a hole in the van. Um, but after doing the skylight in this, I'm like, whatever, just put a hole in it, um, it'll be fine. So let's go have a look and we'll see uh, exactly where the fan's going to go. <laughs> the fan. Let's go have a look and we'll see exactly where the exhaust is going to go because now we've got an exact reference point. So in theory, this exhaust is going to sit in flush against here. Part of the reason I was okay to do it on this side is because it's sort of near the back of the van and quite low. It is pretty low profile, so I'm not too concerned about looking too much like a camper van. It will be still pretty plain on this side. So on this side of the van, at least, the only thing that's gonna give it away as being a camper van is gonna be this. So the way I'm gonna mark it from the outside is I did find a different hole saw. This one's not for cutting metal. This drill isn't strong enough or is made of the right material to go through the metal. It's made for plasterboard. But what it will do is when I put it in and start drilling through, it will scratch the paint. That'll give me an exact circle, the exact size that I need to cut. So while I'm not gonna drill through with this, uh, I am gonna use this to mark out the exact dimensions of our exhaust. Okay, there's no going back now. All good? Yep. So you can see here, it's kind of left a little mark. So this is what we're gonna be cutting out. We're gonna use this mark as a template, uh, but we're gonna be using some tape around it as well so that we don't scratch the rest of the van because, you know. <laughs> so we've gone through and marked out the hole. And so you can see that this is the same size as the exhaust pipe. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm just gonna draw a slightly larger hole within the circle uh, that I'm gonna be able to use to put the jigsaw blade in because I don't want to have to jigsaw from the inside of the circle all the way out. So I'm just gonna have to drill just here and then I'll already be on the outside of the circle, which will mean life's easy, right? I just wanna measure one more time. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, you measured, you confident? Never confident. <laughs> I'm far more confident than I was. When did we start this project? About two months ago? Yeah. Nah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. You ready? Yeah, go for it. Ooh, dear. <laughs> That's not a good noise. <laughs> I'm still in like the early stages of like tool school. What I'm gonna do is swap over to a smaller drill bit, which I'm then going to widen rather than try and use the big drill bit to drill the hole the first time around. I'm gonna draw a small hole and use the bigger drill bit to widen it. Um, because at the moment you can see I'm just sort of not really getting in and sliding all over the place and I don't want to go further out of the circle and cut a bigger hole than I need to. I feel like I've been past like the Olympic torch. Like I am now taking over the drilling. Like it is now upon me and I feel this like great responsibility. I feel like I have just been bestowed upon me the power tool to cut the hole in the side of the van. <laughs> you don't, you don't get ahead of yourself. You're only drilling. You're not... You're drilling a hole, she's not, you're probably not gonna do the cutting. All right, so I need um, small hole, 
right there, please. <laughs> Go slowly to start, and then you can speed it up. Yep. And you gotta put some pressure. Upgraded. Go. One, two, three, got a hole in there! I feel like I'm just like. You want me to do it? Yeah. It's alright, I'll graduate next week. like the slowest drill bit in history. <laughs> How thick is this wall? It's pretty thick. <laughs> Yikes. I hope I didn't mismeasure it. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Jeez. This is going to be a bit tricky because I've got to jigsaw in a circle <laughs> at a funny position. So normally like the limited experience I've had, I've always jigsawed like in a downward position. But this time the jigsaw is going to have to go here and jigsaw around that way. Now here's a pro tip, I got this from Colin. We put a little bit of Velcro underneath where all the bolts are. And that will mean that we're not going to scratch the paint. I'm going to stand back because... I think it's probably a good idea. I'm scared. Well, look, I'm scared. <laughs> through a hole in the van. Yeah, it's not a perfectly straight hole, but we can fix up the file. Does it fit? First time. Hey, stop it. If oh, it no, fits. It no, I mean. Force it. It fits. Stop it. It basically fits. Shut up. High fives to that. Smashed it. Beautiful. The next thing we're doing is attaching our hot water heater to the vent. Which, by the way, looks beautiful. <laughs> you did good. Thanks. You did good. Yeah. So when we first put the screws in, uh, I drilled the pilot hole a touch too big, which meant when I put the screws in, the screws just spun and spun and spun and spun. So we don't have those nice white capped screws anymore. I had to go and find some other screws to put in to make sure that it did tighten nice and tight. Otherwise our vent would have just been sitting there. This is the inside of the hot water. We've just taken the side panel off because we want to check to make sure that this joint here is nice and safe and that it does join, which it does. So we're going to attach the exhaust to the outside and then we'll come in and connect this and probably put a big O-ring on it and tighten it up so it's nice and secure. Yeah. <laughs> Think of all of the van build tasks that we've kind of done so far. Plumbing seems to be one of the most overwhelming. Plumbing and electrics. I don't know, like, you can watch a bunch of videos on how to cut out a floor and really it's just like marking out some wood and cutting it out. But with plumbing and electrics, there's all of these bits and pieces and so much could go wrong. I'm being dramatic. There's not that much that could go wrong, but there's more that could go wrong than with just cutting wooden floors. Mm -hmm.